on January 20th. Eddie Vega gets one last chance at redemption when he competes in his final wrestling match. Vega began his legendary career in Ultimate Championship Wrestling under the wing of former UCW International Champion Alcatraz. The pairing of Vega and Alcatraz kept the latter as a staple in UCW in the early 2010s after his full-time competition was coming to an end. Is yeah, he's a homeboy, he get down, you know, whatever, you know, he had your back. But his character was that, that, that homie that cracks you up all the time. What you do is you take your personality, your wrestling character right. is that magnifying glass right. that's over what's already part of you. You just magnify it. So, and that's the thing with Anthony is that, you know, that, you know, he comes up, gives you a hug, what's up brother, you know, and that's just him. Right. Well, it's, it's the same way with that character, but, you know, he, he gets down. Eddie Vega gets down, but right. he's the guy that you love, you know? Right. It's just like, wow. Because every time I look at Eddie Vega, I see Alcatraz. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he still does some homage stuff and my honor, my character's honor, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, uh, when he does the elbow drop off the middle rope. You know, I, I just, you know, it's just... A little stuff. Yeah, it's the things that matter, you know, and it's... That goes back to what I said about taking yourself, putting it under a magnifying glass, and then, you know, making your character. And so, I mean, because he has that background in the, in, in having that hard life, street life stuff. Like, he was raised around that stuff also. So it's not like, you know, he dove into something that he had no clue about. He knows exactly. We just took something that was part of our life in the past and just... This pairing, as well as Vega's general persona, was the brainchild of longtime UCW commentator and booker, David Alexander. And so, the, initially the pairing was, like you said, to... The pairing was designed to give Alcatraz kind of someone to play off of. Um, one of the things that we noticed with Alcatraz was that he does better when he plays off of like a group. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's why we gave him a couple other people to begin with. And then um, with Eddie, they kind of just naturally clicked uh, both in the ring and, off, and outside of the ring. Mm -hmm. So they kind of got along really well together. I paired them up because I felt that they would work really well together. It would give us a chance to kind of build them up. And so initially their whole thing was basically to be to be our tag, our like monster heel tag team champions. Right. So that's what their plan was. At UCW Trial by Fire 2011, Vega began a historic rivalry with Reggie Bright that became a turning point for both competitors. Like Mike and Davey was great. Yeah. Like they killed it, obviously, and that's a that's what people brought people in the building. But you see these two dudes, both well over 300 pounds. You think it's gonna be some boring ass match, and these people were standing at the end. So, I think that was a big turning point for both of us. As soon as that happened, you guys were like, oh, shit. Like, one of these people had to like these guys. And two, these guys, if they can do that with each other, and we're the biggest guys on the show, I think they'll do with everybody else. And we killed it. We killed it. <laughs> no, crap, we killed it. We killed it. Vega was brought into WCWF by Yuba City legend and WCWF booker Ryan Piles. Eddie Vega coming in didn't really happen as fast as I wanted it to. Uh, he was doing really weird spot in, spot out. I had him team with uh, Jesus Cruz, yeah. which got over really, really well. Unfortunately, Jesus couldn't stay around long term. Um, but when like the time dissipated of him not being on the shows consistently, it was kind of a good thing because then I vouched heavily for a run. 
like we're gonna bring Eddie Vega in and this is the direction we're gonna take a totally different direction that I've never done with anyone else um, and thankfully I was graced with the opportunity to do this and the James Von Erie match was the start of it I wanted Eddie Vega to just look dominant and I wanted it to be quick. I wanted it to be straight to the point. I didn't want people to miss what he was doing because if you blinked, you missed it. When Vega finally arrived at WCWF, he quickly sparked a significant rivalry with the Honor Society. Vega brought in the longest reigning WCWF champion Joe DeSole as an equalizer to win the war. Because a lot of people didn't remember their one-off team in UCW, I feel that people were looking at it looking at them teaming together like, what is this? Why are they teaming together? This is so weird, whatever. But in reality, I'm looking at it like, look at how charismatic both these guys are. Look at how established Joe DeSoul has become in our area from his days of working in UCW all the way to his days starting with WCWF and becoming the top guy in WCWF. And then now here's a guy, Eddie Vega, that is extremely over, um, a top guy, in UCW, now teaming with the top guy in WCWF, um, why not? And you have the top heel act. Like, this is this Prince money. The audience will forever remember Eddie Vega as being the most charismatic performer that they have seen in quite some time. And how much he cared about them having a good time, being at the shows, and being interactive with his fan base. I mean, come on, name a person he won't talk to. In a good way, too. He's not putting you down. He's trying to bring you up. He's always trying to bring you up. Even when there's negativity and whatever. Oh yeah, but you know that's how we do, huh? <laughs> like that's him right there. When he did stuff, the crowd was engaged. You know, every hit he did in the corner, he incorporated the crowd, you know? So it wasn't like, like, oh, there's a guy doing stuff. No, he looked at you like, well, what do you want me to do? Kind of thing, you know, here I go. Eddie Vega wants you to be his fan. And I think people connect to that because they, they feel like, well, if Eddie Vega's gonna invest in me, I wanna invest in Eddie Vega. And so I think that by the fans, the biggest thing that he'll be remembered for is that you could tell he genuinely cared about having fans, and he genuinely cared about his fans. And so I think that um, he wanted to go out there and reward them for that, and so you felt like what you were giving out, he was putting back just as much. On January 20th, at WCWF Redemption. After many battles and accomplishments that will echo in Yuba City wrestling history, he will have his final match against the boogeyman, Joe DeSoul.